Hello, I'm going to demonstrate various properties of the center of mass. Here I have a number of different objects. If, for example, if we have a uniform uh, board here and the mass is distributed uh, symmetrically, the center of mass would be right at the geometrical center. Here's a hatchet. We see the center of mass is pulled uh, by this extra weight of the head of the hatchet here to uh, closer to the uh, the head and uh, further from the geometric center. Center of mass would be located approximately at this position. For a ring, we don't even have any matter located there. The center of mass is right at the geometrical center of the ring if it's a symmetrical ring. Here I have two objects of uh, approximately equal mass and we find the center of mass would be located at a point halfway between the two objects. However, if one object is more massive than the other, that would tend to pull the center of mass closer to the more massive object. Uh, here's just a general shaped object. Every object has a center of mass, and I'm guessing that this object has a center of mass located uh, somewhere in uh, this vicinity. Now, if uh, we're going to uh, actually locate the center of mass of some general shaped object, such as uh, an object, uh, well, it's not quite exactly the same shape, but just a general shaped object, such as we might find if we pick up a potato or some object that has a general shape to it, and we want to locate the center of mass. So we use the property that when an object is supported about some point, for equilibrium, the center of mass will hang directly below that point of support. Uh, when it's free to move and pivot about one point only. So if the center of mass hangs below that point of support, the center of mass then would be, just as it is for this plumb bob, the center of mass of the plumb bob hangs below this point of support. So I'm going to use this plumb bob here to locate the center of mass of this object. So we can see that the center of mass then, if it hangs below that point of support, when there are no other torques, other than the gravitational torque due to the mass of the object, then the center of mass will lie along that line. So I'll draw a perfectly straight line right down through that center of mass. Well, maybe close enough. Now, we know the center of mass is somewhere along that line, but where along that line? Well, let's pick another point to support it about. Just happen to have another hole right here. We could put this little sawed-off nail through there. And uh, now we see the center of mass will be located where those uh, two lines cross or uh, right down where those lines cross or approximately there. So just to check it, let's take a third point. Let's take uh, this point here and anchor it at that point and let it come to equilibrium. Under equilibrium, center of mass lies directly below that point of support. In that case, the torque due to gravity uh, could be considered to act through the center of mass, and the lever arm for the gravitational torque would be zero. That's why it is that the, uh, the center of mass tends to hang below that point of support. So we find that uh, those three lines all intersect at a common point, and if we were to do a fourth point check on it, let's take another point here, somewhat at random, we would find that uh, it lies along that straight line as well. I won't draw that on there, but just to show you that all of those lines pass through a common point. The center of mass. And of course the center of mass is a three-dimensional point. In this plane we see it's where these lines intersect, but this has a certain thickness, so it's really halfway between the front surface and the back surface, but directly behind this point. Now, uh, just as a check on it, if the center of mass uh, tends to hang below the point of support, what happens if I support it right at the center of mass? Well, I happen to have a point uh, right there, uh, have a hole supported there at the center of mass, and it turns out that it's an equilibrium, whatever the orientation when it's supported at the center of mass. So one of the properties that the center of mass has is that if you sup suspend an object there, it'll stay in equilibrium. If you suspend an object at some point above the center of mass, the center of mass will, 
will tend to hang directly below the point of support. Now, if I were to spin this object about an axis through here and just let it, just let it spin and kind of spin around that point, we see it tends to whip a little bit due to the gravitational torque, which behaves as if it were acting through the center of mass. So it first speeds it up and then slows it down in a rotational sense. But if I support it right at the center of mass and then let it rotate, about this point, right through the center of mass, we see it rotates smoothly about that point and doesn't tend to whip. One of the principles, of course, in balancing automobile tires, for example. So the center of mass has a number of uh, different uh, properties. We've demonstrated some with that board. Here's another example. Here we see this uh, balance bar here. I have one newton of force here and one newton of force here. This newton of force is out uh, six uh, units of distance. And this one is out six units of distance. And we see that the torque from this side and the torque from the one over on this side are equal and opposite. And it's balanced at that position. Another way to describe it is that the center of mass of the system is located right here at the axis of rotation. And so it's in rotational equilibrium. So if I were to uh, move this mass over here, say three units of distance, now, of course, the torques will be unbalanced when I remove my hand, but also the center of, uh, of mass will no longer be at this uh, fulcrum point here. In order to bring the center of mass back to this point here, what I need to do is either let it hang like that, which uh, kind of complicates the geometry, or I can take another one newton of mass and have two newtons at three units of distance balance one newton at six units of distance. And again, we've restored the center of mass to this point uh, at the axis of rotation. And we see it's again in rotational equilibrium. Again, the net torque must be zero for rotational equilibrium, and it follows from that that the center of mass must be such that gravity can produce no torques for rotational equilibrium. I can illustrate that further here with the leaning tower. Here the leaning tower uh, is tending to tip over. The reason it doesn't is because if it does tip over, it'll rotate about an axis let me represent that axis of rotation here by this, by this uh, string here. A string will be uh, along the axis of rotation. and It'll rotate about that axis. But because the center of mass is over on the other side of the axis, the gravitational torque, which, which can be calculated by considering all the mass concentrated at the center of mass, it tends to rotate it back into the table, or the actual leaning tower tends to... Uh, rotated into the ground so that it's, in, it's balanced with the gravitational torques and the other forces and torques that act. However, if we make it taller and if we don't have a strut here to support it and if we don't have a guy wire over here to support it, if it's just balanced there under the influence of gravitational torques, then we make it taller, what happens? The center of gra gravity is, or the center of mass is moved up further and that pulls the center of mass to the other side of this axis of rotation, and that will cause the tower to tip over. So for balance, the t center of mass has to be on the proper side of the axis of rotation. Another example of that is uh, here I have a, a little toy bird, and uh, we uh, desire to balance that bird uh, by its beak. And it appears that maybe the center of mass is located back behind the beak, so the bird will tend to fall over this way. But look what happens when we balance the bird. It balances about one point, right at the tip of the beak. The reason for that is because we put some weights, some heavy weights in the ends of the wings. That pulls the center of mass down and pulls it out to where, where the center of mass lies slightly below that particular point of support. Center of mass would be just below the beak of that bird, 
and we see it's in equilibrium, indicating that the net torque on the system due to gravity is zero, and that's because the center of mass lies directly below the point of support. Another example of, uh, of this would be uh, a board and a bottle. And if I want this board and bottle to, uh, to balance, to not rotate about that axis, nor rotate about that axis, then I uh, need to uh, adjust this properly. And this, of course, has been all prearranged. And we can balance that board bottle system in that fashion. So it doesn't tend to rotate about that axis in that direction, nor does it tend to rotate about, about an axis through that edge of the board in that direction, but rather the center of mass is located between those two axes in such a way that the gravitational torque is zero because the lever arm passing through that center of mass, the lever arm for gravitational torques is zero if we assume all the mass for mathematical purposes concentrated at the center of mass. Now, another example of that would be to take a, uh, a hinged board here. I don't know of any practical application of this except just to demonstrate this principle. Here this board uh, is in two parts and there's a hinge here so that this end is free to rotate in that fashion. Now, if I were to uh, desire to, if I desired to have this end of the board remain up there without pushing up on it with my finger and applying a torque in that direction with my hand, to balance the gravitational torque tending to pull it down. I could, uh, if I happen to have a hammer, kicking around the laboratory, which I just do here, I take this hammer and uh, support it uh, uh, on, the, uh, on, on this uh, end of the board in such a way that as the hammer uh, hangs there, the uh, center of mass of the hammer plus this end of the board, everything that's free to rotate about that hinge, center of mass is over on this side, and that supplies a torque tending to rotate it back up this way, keeping it in balance. The further out the hammer is from that point, the further the center of mass moves in that direction, and the more difficult it is to keep it balanced about that uh, axis of rotation. There's a number of examples of how the center of mass comes into play in balancing systems. Now, another place where the center of mass comes into play is if I have uh, two objects like this, uh, say they have equal mass, the center of mass would be at the center. It turns out that if I, uh, if I have two, uh, two balls and they have equal masses, and if I let one ball spin about the other ball, the center of mass will be a point that will follow a nice smooth trajectory through space, just as if it were a rock or a single object. Let me see if I can demonstrate that. I'm going to get one ball rotating, each ball rotating about that common center of mass, and see if you can follow this path just moving through space. So the center of mass follows that path. So again, the center of mass is that place where for certain mathematical purposes you can consider all of the mass concentrated. Now, if I have two balls, and they may be the same size, but uh, they may not necessarily be the same mass. Let's see what happens when I take these two balls and let them fly through space. Wow. Now, can you see that the center of mass is located closer to the heavier ball? This ball actually had some lead weight in it. This is just a hollow tennis ball. So the center of mass of this system would be located very near this ball. And when the system rotates and spins freely, it turns out the center of mass is a thing that follows that nice smooth projectile path. Properties of the center of mass.